the syllabus specifically asks to talk about satellite communication systems, geostationary, low earth orbit and GPS. Let's quickly cover the three. Geostationary satellites are satellites that stay in a fixed point above the earth. There is only one spot in the earth you can do this and that's being above the equator. Geostationary satellites are exactly 35,786 kilometres straight up, assuming you're standing on the beach. If you're in central west New South Wales where your elevation is about a kilometre up, then they're obviously 35,785 kilometres above your head. So they must be precisely located. Why is that? If you think about um, centrifugal force. The Earth is spinning. The satellite needs to spin at a certain speed to keep itself above that position on the Earth's surface. As it's spinning, it's got the centripetal force throwing it outwards. It's got gravity pulling it back to ground. The point where it can stay above a location on the Earth's surface where the centripetal force that's throwing it out is balanced by gravity as at, when it's spinning at a radius that is 35,786 kilometres above the Earth's surface. So there are literally hundreds of satellites above the equator getting to a point where they cannot fit any more in at that position. Every radio dish is pointing at a spot in the sky above the equator. So, they are geosynchronous satellites. They're used to transmit at about 12 to 14 gigahertz. Remember your 5 gig and the fact you must have line of sight? Obviously, you've got great line of sight to a satellite when there's no cloud. Those of you that have got satellite TV or satellite NBN, know that the satellite NBN works a lot better when it's clear than it does when it's cloudy because rain absorbs some of that gigahertz frequency. If it's pouring rain, then it's highly unlikely your satellite communication is going to work well. But that is geostationary satellites. They must be a fixed distance above the Earth so they can rotate and follow and not fly outwards, not get sucked in by gravity. GPS. There are 24 satellites above the Earth. They are 20,000 kilometres up. There's 24 of them in random, not random. The US military know exactly where they are to the nearest probably 5 centimetres, 20,000 kilometres up. They know exactly where they are. They know the speed, they know the position. The, clock, the satellites when they're launched have a highly stable, highly accurate atomic clock in them. So every one of those 24 satellites has got exactly the time down to the nanosecond. Being 20,000 kilometres up, their orbit period is 12 hours. Once every 12 hours they do a lap around the Earth. They have to travel quicker than the geostationary satellites because they're closer to Earth, so gravity's stronger and pulling them in. So they've got to travel faster to get the centripetal force to keep them at the um, right altitude. So, time position. How does it work? If you're here in, I don't know, here's Australia. Perth is the bite. That alerts. There's Tasmania. There's some satellites. As I said, the frequency on these satellites, or the clock on these satellites, is incredibly accurate. Incredibly accurate. So, that means, if I send a signal from here, because speed of light is 300 million metres per second, if I'm standing here and I send a signal out from my GPS receiver, which is also time to the same atomic clock. It says the time is currently 12.13 and point one three eight seven six five two one four of a second. I want to know where I am. It sends out a signal to that one. This clock, this satellite says I received your signal at this time. 
you are this far away from me. So it basically does what's called triangulate. Let's use this little corner of the board. So there's you, so you know you are that far from this satellite, you are this far from this satellite, that far from that satellite, and then it can tell you accurately to within about three metres on the world's surface where you are. Three, if you think about three intersecting spheres, one, two, three, they can intersect in two points. You need a fourth satellite to tell you, are you intersecting at the low point or the high point? To get accuracy, you need five, six, seven, eight satellites just to minimise the error. That is how GPS works. The syllabus mentions low Earth orbit satellites, which are spy satellites. I'm guessing since it's telecommunication, the references to the Iridium network, the satellite phone network. Um, low Earth orbit satellites are only 780 kilometres up. A lot less than that. Because gravity is so strong there, they need to be travelling really fast to get the um, centripetal force to hold them in space. So, they orbit the Earth every 100 minutes. If you're making a phone call on a satellite phone, in seven minutes the satellite has gone from being on the horizon there, going over your head, going to the other side. The satellites, there must, there's lots of them up in the sky. So as one satellite passes, there's another one coming in another direction to take over the signal. So it works at 1.6 gigahertz. GPS works at 1.57, 1.2276 gigahertz. They're all basically working in that gigahertz microwave band. That's the basics of satellite communication that you need to know for the HSC.